Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's the Audible Farm Podcast. It's episode number 120, and it is brought to you by Couchtown Coffee. If you follow us on social media, I'm sure you saw that picture of that giant bag of coffee that uh, I recently got from Couchtown Coffee. It was massive. It was so big. And uh, hats off to Couchtown Coffee. That made me smile so much. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, check it out. And if you're wondering what's the big deal with Couchtown Coffee, well, it's my favorite coffee. And I don't just say that because they uh, you know, help me out on the podcast here a little bit. I say that in all honesty. It's the coffee that I, I go out and buy specifically. It's the one I seek out every now and then. I will go to another brand, but I always end up going back to Couchtown, um, and it's my favorite. So if you guys want to check it out, go to CouchtownCoffee.com, find a coffee you like, you can make an order, and not only that, you can save 20%. All you got to do is enter the code word Audible Farm. When you make an order, just say, hey, Audible Farm sent me here, boom, 20% off. Why? Because Couchtown Coffee is that awesome. Not only do they make awesome coffee, not only are they from Iowa, not only is it the freshest roasted coffee, it's uh, made to order as well. But they'll ship it to your house, and the roaster there, the person who has started Couchtown Coffee, Andrew Chipman, I did a podcast with him. He's actually from near my area, and he plays music himself. His father's a musician. It's it's wild. It's it's all intertwined, and Couchtown Coffee is my favorite coffee. So if you guys play music and you drink coffee, give it a shot. You get 20% off. Use that code word, Audible Farm. Thank you very much, Couchtown Coffee. Find them at CouchtownCoffee.com, also on Facebook at Couchtown Coffee. This episode, I'm sitting down with Mike Schulte from the Pork Tornadoes. I've sat down with him, uh, let's see here, it would have been episode number 95 maybe was when I sat down with him. So almost a half a year ago, I sat down with him and we talked a little bit about the Pork Tornadoes and what's going on in that camp. Since then, um, I've kind of buddied up with him a little bit online. I spin ideas off of him here and there, and I, I listen to his podcast, the Iowa Music Podcast, and he tackles a lot of very important topics in his podcast, and I I think it's very interesting. I, I found myself on a road trip. I was listening to some podcasts. I ran out of things to listen to, and I was like, I'm going to start deep diving into this, and the more, li- the more I listened, the more I loved his podcast. So if you haven't checked it out, it's called the Iowa Music Podcast, but he's also the drummer for the Pork Tornadoes, and if you don't know what the Pork Tornadoes are, they're a cover band in Iowa, and they actually have... 20 or 30,000 Facebook likes, somewhere in that neighborhood. They've got YouTube videos um, nearing 5 million views. Uh, it's pretty wild. You should check out some of their stuff online. They're from Iowa. It's just uh, Iowa dudes doing Iowa dude stuff. They sing all sorts of music. It's it's pretty wild. I've shown them to a handful of people, and they think it's pretty interesting. So if you haven't checked out the Pork Tornadoes, check it out. We talk about all sorts of crazy stuff in this podcast. If you tuned in, you tuned into a special one, because, I mean, we go over a bunch of hot-button issues. Oh, let's see here. I don't want to give too much away, but uh, we talk about maybe teaming up with local businesses, uh, things you should do on social media, uh, policies with having merch or not having merch, uh, no more free shows, uh, what's it going to take to support music again, are all the pork tornadoes a bunch of sellouts, What you know? what's the deal? So we talk about all those things and a whole pile more. Mike uh, has become one of my favorite people that I randomly met through doing a podcast, and I, I think you guys will enjoy this one too. Uh, Check it out. It's going to be tons of fun. If you guys are tuned in, I know you're 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 ready to go, but this one's going to be a great one. It's episode 120 with Mike Schulte of The Pork Tornadoes and the band Dope Walker as well. It's the Audible Farm Podcast with your host, Peter Stockdale. I'm sitting down today with Mike Schulte. You guys might recognize the name from a recent podcast. I looked it up. It's been about six months, though, since I've talked to you, which seems like... Seriously? Yeah. It seems like, uh, you know, like just yesterday, but it was just about six months ago we talked, so... How many times... uh, This year is just so strange where there will be times when 
when something back from February seemed like it was yesterday, but then there'll be times where something a month ago seemed like years ago. I, I cannot, it's like a weird paradox of time this year. I can't keep anything straight. I can't either, man. I know exactly where you're coming from too. I did an interview with a band. I'm like, so you released an album this year. And they were like, no, that came out in like spring of 2019. And it's like, oh, well, <laughs> that's because this year was deleted. So if you delete this year, it came out this year, you know, but this weird this year's been weird. Um I I was talking about it on one of the outros of one of my other podcasts where I went on a trip and uh I ran out of stuff to listen to and I started just binging through your Iowa Music podcast and some of those episodes were so entrancing to uh listen to you like hit on some of these hot button issues that you know, I don't want to say I don't want to talk about but you're willing to talk about them and I think it's really cool. Um Well, See, okay, so so I'll give you a little background. So I, I started the Iowa Music Podcast maybe like two or three years ago, and it started off as a way to literally just – I felt like I was a guy that had gained some knowledge and that knew some things, and I legitimately wanted to spread that knowledge and, and help people out, right? Like so – I don't care what we talk about. I'll give you an honest answer, right? I'll, if you're asking me about social media, I'll tell you what you need to do. If you're asking me about booking and pay, like, let's, let's talk about it. Let's dive into this. And, you know, for the most part, it was great. But eventually people started just saying, like, well, what's in this for you? And, and why do you think you got to be this guy that, that tells everybody everything? And it just – all of a sudden I realized that like, why, why am I doing this? I legitimately want to help. And I just, I don't know. Like I, I really love talking about hard, hard topics and hard things. And I think our music scene in general and in my area, which is Cedar Rapids, but in the state in general, I, I've always, I've always pitched unity. Like whether you're a cover band, an original band, a metal band, a jazz band, I don't give a shit. We are technically a community and I've always thought that we needed to come together. And the only way was to like become friends and get to know people. Yeah. And yeah, ultimately that's all it's been. And, and you know, so we've, we've gone more into, I've been happy getting into your podcast. I mean, we're not trying to throw like things back and forth here, but mm -hmm. just, I love hearing stories about people that I don't know and musicians. And, and I don't know many of the musicians that you've had on your podcast, but it's just been so cool to hear from these different people that have the same struggles and the same lives and the same things that no matter where you're from, like it's all the same. And we're all we're all doing this music thing for fun um, and we all want to see successes. But ultimately, it's just like it's just in our blood. This is what we do. And it's so cool to just find that connection with everybody. Yeah, yeah, 100 percent. I feel like you and I kind of started this the same for the same reasons. Like I hadn't spent much time in the music scene, so I wasn't so much like the guy that knew all this stuff. But I, I had spent some time in the scene and I was like, you know, I can contribute this way and help other people get their stuff out there and maybe tell your story or or talk about like you, you just put out a new album. What were the struggles? You know, what did, what's the thought process going into this? You know, and uh, talk about different things in the scene like. Uh, you play in the Pork Tornadoes. Uh, I would definitely have to say you're probably the biggest cover band in Iowa. Um, I don't know who I would throw in the hat next to you guys, but um, you guys have a different mindset maybe than some of the local bands playing, but I feel like there are a lot of parallels, um, even in what you're talking about on your podcast compared to like what, what I'm talking about on my podcast. Uh, for example, you brought up, I actually wrote this one down. You brought up, uh, social media on yours. You got to have social media. Cause if it's not there, how are they going to see stuff? You know, dude. And, and the, the, here's the nuts part about social media is you could probably go back. You could go back. I, I did an episode like two years ago, the first one we did about social media. And, and the messed up thing about that is a lot of the things we talked about are probably obsolete and out of date. Uh, Ooh. cause cause social media just changes so much that not only do you have to have it, but then secondarily you have to know how to use it and you have to keep up with using it. That I think that's why so many people get lost in the shuffles because it is it's nearly a full time job to run like a band or a brand social media. There there's so much work involved with it, and the problem is is Facebook just keeps squashing. Anyone that's not in an argumentative political mood, that's just the way I feel that that if you're a band going, hey, I got this album and it's super cool, it's just going to get squashed and no one's going to find out about it. And if you run a page, if you run your band's page and you see those 
percentages of like, well, I have I have 4,000 likes on my Facebook page and only 200 people saw my last post. That is absolute garbage. And that is I, – I, I, I have a theory that if the general public knew – let, let's say they put those stats in like general public's Facebooks, you know, like so you're Sally, Sally Johnson and you go, I'm a, here's a picture of my kid and Sally has 2000 friends. And then they tell her that only 200 people saw this. There would be revolt. People, <laughs> people would leave Facebook and like torches. You know so, it. I know they would, man. And it just sucks. It sucks. And I feel for everybody out there that if you're running your band's page, man, this is tough tough sled and to try to find any ground that people can 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 get in, in there and can see your stuff and that's what i've been preaching all along is that if you are part of a scene and you're friends with the musicians the number one thing you can do is like and comment on anything you see from any of your friends bands even if you knew that they were putting out an album and you already bought it still click that like button and still comment on it because it helps more than you know you're 100 percent right with the liking and commenting um just liking and commenting anything will put it farther up in your own algorithm first and foremost. Like, uh, if, if I like the pork tornadoes page and never once like any of your posts or videos, eventually it's just going to get squished to yeah. no, to nowhere. And then big deal, you know, I like the pork tornadoes. I never see your stuff. That's just how it's going to work. But like <laughs> when you like and comment on something, here's a good thing. I was scrolling through my Facebook the other day and I'm just like everyone else. You bust your phone out, you scroll through for five minutes, you get bored, you put it back in your pocket. You do that a few times throughout the day. And before you know it, it's just, I was thinking to myself, like, why do I keep seeing this one post over and over and over again? It was because my friends were commenting on it. And oh, yeah. It, and that's why it pops up because it's like, oh, your friends are commenting on this. So maybe you want to see this and chime in too. And that's why it keeps popping up. So those comments actually are almost worth more than a share or a like, in my opinion. I completely agree. I mean, you let's say that you'd only pulled your phone out one time during the day and had a quick couple minute scroll that likely would have showed up in there, but you would have missed everything else that, that completely that didn't gain traction. You would have just missed everything. Yeah. A hundred percent. And it's tough to find the right traction. Cause like you said, you can see, I mean, we're three finger Betty. We got, you know, we're only like six or 700 likes on Facebook, but you know, we can post stuff and some weird stuff, you know, it's like, oh, this 2000 people saw this and you're like 2000. Like, how did that happen? It got shared three times. And it's like, oh, well, this was a meme that we posted. And it was like, you know, it's the shocked Pikachu meme. And it's like, this is, you know, when you go see Three Finger Betty Live for the first time, oh, you know, shocked Pikachu. And it's like, that got like 2000 views. And I posted about something else we did, you know, to like a Facebook event. And like you said, 60 yeah. people saw it. <laughs> like, it's It's insane. Trying to figure out what what Facebook wants, like every month, it changes on what they want. And you, you could put out a something, like you said, just a funny, stupid meme. And like, it could go crazy because for some reason that's just what it's pushing. And then you can put out something very serious. This is important. We need you guys to read this and nobody's going to see it because they just don't find it. I, yeah. And it just changed. And like keeping up on that stuff so important and sharing it with your friends and, and your band buddies like going, Hey, I learned something new. You got to do this and you got to do this. And it actually helps. I, I, why keep that knowledge to yourself? Exactly. You know, I, that's the way I feel like I've always felt like, even if, you know, I'm in a band named three finger Betty, we play punk and rock and stuff. And even if we don't make it famous, big whoop de whoop, but wouldn't it be cool if somebody else did, you know, so why not share this little bits of information you can with other people? And I mean, we some of it comes down to like, I wish I wasn't so selfless, but other times I'm just like, I don't really care. Cause like I, I, spend a lot of time just kind of like when I'm on Facebook, it's like, what are other bands up to? And then you just find out like, oh, they're, they got their stuff on this radio station. So you hit up the radio station. You're like, well, maybe I can get in on that radio station, you know? And then if they put my band on there, I'll send it to a couple of my buddies and be like, Hey, we got our band on this radio station here. And maybe you guys could too. And they could have like a small contingency of Iowa bands if it's out of state, or maybe we can have like, uh, you know, bolster their local scene a little bit more, you know, cause it's like, well, they're in Eastern Iowa, this radio station and they don't, they don't know what's going on in North Central Iowa, so let's toss our hat in the ring, you know. Well, yeah, that totally, man. And like the thing, the thing I've always stressed as well um, to make a music scene grow and and thrive is is not only just the community of musicians getting along. I mean, that's obviously super important. But the number one thing that I think Iowa has a problem with, and maybe. You know, you talk to people from all over, it's probably the same. But we think it's, oh, it's just an Eastern Iowa thing, Northern Iowa thing. But I don't think the general public 
values music as much as they should. And, and that's, and that's the thing I've been stressing all along is like, no matter, no matter how good we are as a community and how great our bands are, if the general public doesn't care and doesn't want to come out and see it and like start spending money, like paying cover charges and telling people about going to see this band, then like it is, it's never going to go anywhere. And, and proving that value, it, I think is the most important thing that any band or any scene can do is making sure the general public understands the importance of live music and supporting local artists, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was something else we had kind of like bantered about off, you know, like before the podcast and things like that was how much scenes, you know, support other, you know, like the bands or, you know, how much we get paid or how much we don't get paid or, or not doing free shows anymore and things like that. And so there were a lot of hot button issues. You and I have kind of bantied back and forth a little bit here lately. And, uh, you know, we've, we kind of glossed over, you know, a couple of them here and there, but let's, let's dive into this. No more free shows. No, no, I, I just I think the time is over for free live streams and free shows. I, I just like I know that people just want to get out there and play. And that that's the reason we do it. We want to play and we just want to take any shows we can. But if if the general public is gets used like, for instance, Cedar Rapids, right? There hasn't been a, a bar, a music venue around here that has been 100 percent cover charge for probably five to six to seven years. The majority of them are always free, free, free people. They get used to that. And then if you legitimately want to put on a high quality show with a bunch of bands, people will walk up and like, five bucks Ugh, and they'll walk away. Five dollars. Yeah. The, the, the general public does not think that your band on a on a bill of five bands that your one band is worth $1, meaning that each band member is worth 25 cents. Yes. That's what the general public feels. And oh it sucks, man. Dude. Dude. Cause I, yeah. <laughs> Lou- I, you know what I mean? <laughs> Louder for people in the back. I, I feel that dude. I was talking. Well, and, and, that's, and that's not a, that's not a dig on, on any band or musician. Cause like, if that's what, it, if that's what it, it is around here, you have to do it, mm-hmm. you know? And, and, and you have to, you have to do those shows to maybe get people to know who you are. So, so I get it. But, but once you've got a crowd, man, if they like you, they'll, they'll, they should want to pay a little bit of money to see you. Right. Yeah. I can understand some venues not wanting to do it. Like if you're playing in a bar that has a stage, but it's not like a dedicated music place, but like they're going to have music and it's like, you're, if we charge a $5 cover, our regulars aren't coming in. You know, so like maybe some places I could see where they might not want to do it, but I totally I'm with you. Like I've I've actually and I'm not going to call out any places, but I've been on stage at a place that charged a five dollar cover and it was uh, the band I was playing in. There was an opener and then there was a headliner and the headliner was national touring. Um, they were like at one point in time, a, a pretty popular band. Like I'm not, I don't, if, if I say any more, I'm going to call out the place I played at, but, uh, <laughs> the whole deal is a $5 cover charge and we're on stage playing a song and, uh, two people walk in the door and I can see the door cause it's right off the side of the stage and our music's not bad cause they obviously walked in and wanted to come in and hang out. But then when they were like five bucks, the two people were just like, nah, I'm out of here. And then the bartender just goes, just let them in anyways. And I let them walk past. So like, it was this whole <laughs> deal. Bluff. Yeah, it's like five bucks. And it's like, well, I'm not paying five bucks. And then someone's like, eh, screw it. Just come in anyways. Then like, well, then what's the point of charging five dollars? You know, you got some of these people that already paid five dollars to come into the show. And then they see that kind of stuff. And it's like, I should have just complained and I could have gotten in free or what? You know, like the, co- the cover at the show. I don't know. It's it's a weird thing because then you got to have somebody else running the door. You got to hope they're honest or they're totally. there. People will drop 20 bucks in a jukebox like it's no thing. Like it's literally <laughs> no problem. They will throw 20 bucks in a jukebox. And, dude, one of the things I've harped on a lot is that cover charges, I, I know there's a lot of venues that don't want to do it, but actually that's the thing that can really help say, like keep a, keep a venue and a bar alive is in Cedar Rapids, let's just say the cover band scene and even many of our amazing originals around here, the the bars will usually guarantee a lump sum of money to this band, no matter what they do, no matter how they promote it, no matter what they show up and play, they get their money and the bar is the one taking the risk. So if all of a sudden there's a cover charge, your, your bar isn't taking as much of a risk 
and the band is now forced to work their butts off. Like I don't how I don't know how long you've been in a band or playing music, but I mean go back to the late nineties, early two thousands when I was in I was in a hardcore band that that toured around quite a bit. Like you had to hustle to get people to your show. There's no Facebook. There it was go out, hand out flyers, hang up flyers, hang up posters, hustle, 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 text all your friends, tell them to come to the show. And nobody, nobody Nobody blinked an eye at a $5 or even a $10 cover back in the day. And now there's just no value in music anymore. Dude, you're 100% correct. I remember going to shows uh, almost 15 years ago. Like I was out of high school. Some of my buddies joined bands. It was very common to see $5 shows. Like if there was a big show, it might be 10 bucks. But they're all almost $5 shows. And I didn't care. Heck, I'd drive two hours to Des Moines to go see a $5 show. And it's and you know what? Because you love music and you're like, this is going to be so sweet. I will gladly pay this. Yeah, exactly. And $5 is nothing. Like you said, if there's three bands on the show, I gave every band like, what, $1.60? Like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You each member 30 cents or whatever, you yeah. know? But, c- but if you dive deep into that, that, those people that walked in to see you, that were immediately going to turn around because they had to pay five bucks. They found zero value in your band or live music or anything. And it's nothing against you because they don't even know who you are. They didn't even give you a chance. But they would rather take that $5 and put it into a jukebox somewhere yeah. than listen to your band play. And that sucks. That is so shitty. Yeah. And we're talking about, like, in most places, $5, one drink. You know, sacrifice one of your beers to watch music, you know, or Or you're you're a craft beer drinker. That's like a half a beer sometimes. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Uh, You brought up another point that I actually I didn't write down, but I want to spin off you. Flyers. Anybody hanging flyers anymore? Do you think people should quit hanging flyers? Should we start doing it? Tag cars everywhere. What are we talking? So let's let's pretend like it's remember when nobody would read nobody would read physical mail that came in the mail but emails were like super special Mm -hmm. but it's sort of flipped where now nobody reads emails but like physical mail you're like holy shit so two to three to four or five years ago screw screw flyers flyers are going to do nothing for you get on facebook make sure people know about your event but now it's like if you physically mailed a poster to 200 people like that might actually go off better than inviting them to a Facebook event. Right. Yeah, (laughs) I I agree, dude. I, I, the parallel there is crazy. Cause like you said, if it was five, five to 10 years ago, I could give a crap what came in the mail. Like I opened my mail like once a month, you know, (laughs) Oh, every day. Right. Yeah. Now it's just like, what is this? Is this something cool? You know, it's like, Oh, I guess it's just another credit card offer, but neat. I got something, you know, at least it's not an email where I got 70 or 80 of them a day and I don't read half of them. You don't even read them, man. And that, that's a whole nother wormhole is like the you nowadays, I think any band or any company or any artist or anything has to completely diversify any way that they're trying to stay in touch with people. Cause you used to be able to rely fully on Facebook as a way to be in touch with people. And now you can't, we've already touched on that. There's no way to make sure that you get in front of your fans. So then it's like, do you have an email mailing list? I mean, like that's actually a probably a pretty important thing. That used to be huge back in the day in the early 2000s. Yeah. Like everyone had a notepad at their merch table and you would write, you would get everyone's email and you put them in there. And then that went away, but I still think that's a a good way to be in touch with people. Um honestly, starting starting a medium like a podcast, I, I don't I'm surprised more bands don't do their own podcast. Me too. Right? Me too. We, be- we have we have one and I'm starting to think it might be the the easiest way to actually get in touch with people out of any mediums that we have. I think it it might be the almost most guaranteed way to talk to our fans. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. Like, especially if you do a podcast, you get the audio out, you put like a little tiny video version, even if it's a single camera shot, who cares? You know, it's something that they can see to kind of interact with you guys. And then maybe be like, I saw you guys talk about this last week. Uh, something, something new album question mark, you know, they could interact with you a little bit in the comment section a little bit more than just posting like, I got a new EP out, go check it out, you know? Like, yeah. Oh, to- totally, man. And like, uh, you know, I got some good advice a couple years ago. I, I actually don't remember who said it, but um, he was talking about the pork tornadoes and he's like, you know, you guys have great videos. I love your music videos. I love everything. But he's like, 
what I really find myself gravitating towards are your more personal videos, the the behind the scenes stuff, the the pod, the, the conversations, the the how to how did we put this show on? Check this out. Here's a weird thing. Here's the outtakes from this video. Like he personally said, he's like, I think people are more interested sometimes in that kind of stuff than they are in just the the music videos, music videos, live performance videos. So that's that's something I took to heart. That I mean create that unique content as a band that no one else is doing that, that, that can cause a, you know, like if, if there's just, if they're scrolling through their music page and everything's a performance video and then all of a sudden it's this funny thing that we did, like they might stop on that cause it's not the same as the rest. So that's, I, I don't know, finding those as a band, finding those unique weird ways to talk to your fans, I, that that's the forever thing that we're going to have to be dealing with. Well, I'll, I will be the first to admit, I do the podcast thing, I play music, I watch a lot of music videos and band videos and things like that. Uh, one of the first things I watched on the Pork Tornadoes page was you guys reading insults. So, <laughs> so like, it, it does help, you know? It was just one of those things where, like, oh, yeah, these guys got mu- music videos. Yeah, okay, 4 million, 5 million views on YouTube, cool, you know, like, 300,000 on Facebook, neat. And then it was like, wait, what's this? And then it's just like, oh, this is hilarious. These guys are reading these people insulting them online, just like, what? Like, okay, yeah. sounds good. Yeah. There's three full volumes of things that we have saved that people have said to us meanly on on social media things. And we took it and we embraced it and we made mean tweet. We read them and joked about them. And that if if you if you as a band or an artist have not had someone say anything mean to you, you're not you're not popular enough. You're not getting out there enough. You're not getting you're not. I mean, because like you need that's a sign of making it is if somebody says something bad about you, then you're like, okay, cool. I did it. <laughs> I yeah. made it. I'm actually doing something good. So take those, like have fun with them. If somebody writes something stupid about you, dude, I, that happened on the podcast. And that was like one of the first things, like 10 episodes in, I had somebody just be like, you know, pretty much like this podcast is trash and you're trash pretty much. And I was just like, what? And then I was like, wait, well, at least somebody's listening, you know? So I, <laughs> so I well, went, it- Go ahead. I went like, you know, into about episode 50 and it happened again. And I was just like, cool. People are still listening. You know, I didn't, I didn't think too much of it. It's a little disheartening, but at the same time, roll with the punch and it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. I'm dude. I'm, can, I'm a firm believer. Cause I take, I take that stuff kind of hard sometimes. I mean, to literally have someone say that what you're spending your time <laughs> and your passion on to say that it's trash. Like you're like, come on, you didn't even clearly give this a listen. You just, you're being a dick, and I take that personally. But you really got to think about it. If if you know a, let's say you know a, a guy that sings in a band or whatever, and let's say he's your he's your really good friend, but he is just terrible, cannot hold the note. You're not gonna tell him that he sucks because like you're like he probably already knows this. I don't really don't want to rub this in, but if he's really really good and you hate him, you're gonna tell you're gonna tell people, oh he sucks. He's not a good singer. Mm-hmm. Like you just don't say that. So that means like if. Somebody says bad shit about you. You're probably doing something right. <laughs> well, I, some of that also comes down to like one time when I was playing, somebody snarkied off to us on stage about a talent, our talent level or whatever. And I literally was just like, you come up here and play it, you know, and that's how I feel about a lot of that stuff. Like, if you don't like what I'm doing, you do something and I'll, it up. do your thing and, show, you know, I don't care what it is. You. I, I don't know. I, I feel that way about a lot of stuff, though, too. You know, it's like, you don't like my podcast? Start your own, you know? it's I'll probably even support it because I'm a nice guy, you know? <laughs> most, most people that talk shit, don't, they don't have any motivation to do anything on, on their own. So they, they just, they're just going to talk shit about how they could do it better, but they're never going to try it. Yeah. What is their, like, four music podcasts in the state of Iowa out of how many musicians? You know, it's just because people are... They don't have the either the skill or the motivation to do something like this, you know, and they, they totally could. Someone listening right now could start one up. And do it. I think they should. You know, if somebody's no. listening, they should. You know, you've got a monthly we or a monthly podcast that talks about music. It's every month, right? It's Iowa Music Podcast, if anybody wants to go hunt it down. Yeah, sorry, I lost I lost you there for a second. But yeah, it's I don't know. We tried to go like every couple of weeks and then every once in a while we'll go two months. I mean, you're you're pretty regular, which is how I admire you. I I ended up actually, you know, I you're you're handling a lot of these interviews and you're doing a good job here. So like I'll only kind of do something if I if maybe there's somebody locally that I really want to talk to or a hot button topic. I actually just started, I guess if people are listening to this, they like podcasts, but I just started a um 
classic movie review podcast with some buddies called Confused Breakfast. Yep. And we've been doing that like religiously. There is a this is how the show goes. It is like scripted for the most part. I mean, we're like trying to trying to do something really special. So that's what I've been sort of spending my my podcast time on. It's it's pretty sweet. Yeah, I actually listened to the first episode. Tons of good. I, I I'll probably find myself binging through it, you know, on one of those times where I'm like, oh, yeah, I I'm out of podcasts. Let's cruise through Mike's other podcast that he's got here. And I'm sure that's when it's going to get me hooked. But I, f- I feel like there should be more podcasts and more people doing something in the form of like doing an outlet, you know. And I mean, we talked about before you're in the Pork Tornadoes, you know, one of the biggest bands in Iowa, uh, 30 plus thousand Facebook followers, something like that. I mean, it's it's pretty wild. You got videos on YouTube. One of them cleared four or five million views, which yeah, I mean, that's insanity in and of itself. But I got to bring up the topic, you know, some people are out there and they might think, well, like, I'm not going to support the pork tornadoes because they're sellouts. And uh, I'm just going to I'm just going to throw it out there because there's people that think that way. And how do I how do I know that? It's the fact that I have uh, like 1500 Facebook friends and probably 900 of them are musicians and then only 30 of my friends like your page. You know, <laughs> so it's like, what's what's the deal with this? The biggest band in Iowa. Nobody wants to even even say anything nice about them. What's that all about? Well, dude, I, I get it because honestly, I was I was that way back, back when I was in an original band. Uh, it's called Brian Jones from 99 to 2006. I mean, I remember Cedar Rapids has this pretty big deal called Uptown Friday Nights. It's like the the bands of the band, the best of the best play. And it's this summer festival and it's so great. Right. Uh, And I remember going to one and there was a band that just like they were so terrible and they were a cover band and it was ridiculous. And I I just couldn't understand why why that people even thought they were popular. So I immediately hated them. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that sort of does happen with us because you no, no one knows the work that we've put in and no one knows how long we've been doing this. No one knows, um, you know, like nothing, zero things have been handed to us. Everything we've done, every show we've done has been an organic thing that we've taken the reins on and said, we can do better. Let's, let's do this. Let's, let's sell out the, the theater in our town and let's just, let's blow the production out of the water and let's go nuts. And, and I can, I can get that. Cause if, if you don't know that, you just think we're some shitty band playing, playing Taylor Swift covers, you know, but, <laughs> but, but, and, and I don't care. I get it. Like if you, if you don't even want to give us a shot, that's totally fine. Um, I, I just think we, we are legitimately good, good dudes. Uh, we, we love just playing music and creating fun atmospheres for people. And I've had many, many people that have said, dude, I, I used to hate you guys. And I, I saw a 10 second clip one time of your band and I thought you were the worst thing I've ever seen. And I've harbored that feeling for six years. And then I went to your show and I loved every second of it. You know, I mean, that's fine. A, a buddy said, he's like, I hate Taylor Swift, but if Taylor Swift sounded like you guys, I would love it. You know, and like, cool. You know, so, so you can't get caught up in that. I, I get it, man. I'm sure people are saying that during this episode going, whatever, who gives a shit about that band? They're not true artists. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think, I think what we do is pretty cool. And, and maybe I said this on the first time we talked, but I, this is what got me in trouble in the Cedar Rapids music scene and the Iowa music podcast. So I'll just say it here. I always wanted to be a famous musician, right? Yep. Like, like that, that, that's why, I mean, we do music for the love, right? But mm-hmm. also there's that thing in, inside of you that's like, man, I could like this band, like we could be the next band and we could do this. And wouldn't it be cool to make a career out of this? And it never happened, right? I, I, I was in some great acts and I had some amazing times and, and played shows in like 35 states And it was, it was so great, but never made it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I quit music. I stopped playing for a year to a year and a half because I'm an adult now and I don't play music and my dream's gone. Right. Mm -hmm. Then I, then I fell back into this, this cover band world that I used to hate so much. And the, the successes and the things I've done and the stages I've played because of this cover band that I made myself get back into playing music. Like my life, I couldn't imagine my life without it. Like I actually feel like I obtained some of that success that I always wanted as a kid. And you're, you're kidding yourself if you don't, if you don't think that playing in front of a huge crowd and making good coin doing it is like a goal. You're, if you're like, no, I would never do that. You're, you're nuts, dude. You're insane. If you, if you would turn down a huge show, like, cause it doesn't fit your values or whatever, you know? Yeah. I mean, 
I don't know too many people that are just like, yeah, I want to spend hours and hours a week to play a show to nobody and not get paid. I mean, what? Yeah, I, like I get it a little bit. I'm using huge air quotes for people not watching, but it's like uh, something about honor, maybe, or something. You know, like I have values, or like my music. Metal people don't do this, or punk people don't do that, or you know, or whatever. I get it a little bit, but it's still like I'm with you. Like I don't want to spend all this time, energy, and money uh, just for nothing. You know, this isn't, this isn't just a giant money hole for me. I want to, I want to entertain people. I want people to enjoy what I'm doing, you know, and I'm, I'm okay with changing up the avenue if need be to do that, you know, whether it be play in a different band, play a different style of music, go to different places, whatever it happens to be. But man. Well, and the one thing I need to say is that I think that every original band should be on the same stage that we are. Like, I think that original music deserves to be where, where we're at and, and revered where we're at and play these giant shows in front of people. But for some reason, it just, it does not translate that way. And it's not cover bands fault. It's not my fault. It's just the general public does not find value in the songs you wrote or, or they just haven't heard them and they, they need to get out there. And I, like we try to collaborate with original artists any chance we get and get them on lineups with us. And, and, and like, let's be real here. Some of my favorite bands in Iowa are like original artists that are writing songs that I love. I original bands are my favorite bands in the world, right? Like every band that you love is an original band. So like, we're just, I, I wish it was different. Like I, I, I really do. And the, the cool thing about original music though, is that it, there's like no in between, right? There's like either this low floor or if for some reason you take off, you pass us by a million miles. <laughs> and like we're at we're, pork tornadoes are capped. Like we're not, we've hit any sort of ceiling we possibly can. We're never going to go any better. But if you write the next hit song or you become the next hit artist that has this YouTube thing, I mean, you're, you're, you're gone. See ya. Like you're, you've, you're the stratosphere. Dude, you brought up so many good points in, in that little talk there. Cause I was thinking, A rant. well, I, I mean, you're right though. Like if, if you're cruising in your car, you're not listening to pork tornadoes. No offense. You're listening to Miley Cyrus or what, you know, you're listening to Metallica or guns and Rose, whatever, whatever you like to listen to. You're listening to that. Billy Eilish. It doesn't matter. You're listening to that stuff. But if you go play live, you know, like everyone's all about going to see Pork Tornadoes live. But if you're not going to go see an original band play live, which is so weird that you'll drive up to a place listening to original music just to go <laughs> watch somebody else play it or pop money in a jukebox and listen to the jukebox right. play. It's so wild. But like like you said, it's like original bands are down here and the cover bands, I feel like, hover just above most of the original bands. Like oh, yeah. those are the bands that can... I mean, you can have an okay light show, an okay set list, an okay... It, everything can be good, and nothing can be over the top and great, and, and you have this thing where it's like, you can make five to, 500 to $1,000 at just about any place you want, want to play if you have a good cover band, you know? You don't have to go over the top, you don't have to go Pork Tornadoes LEDs with, with you know, drones flying around videotape and stuff. You don't have to go crazy, but you can draw these like $1,000 shows where these original bands, it's like... I mean, some towns you'd be hard pressed to make a couple hundred, you know, and it's it's so weird that there's that weird. You guys are down here. All the cover bands are up here, but everyone only listens to original music half the time. Right. So like, right. Uh, but they just don't go see it live. It, it's it's this weird thing of I think the Pork Tornadoes found success when we were able to make it a known thing like that. People know us and people have to come see it. And it's this cool thing. You can't deny you have to go see this band. And that's when we went off into this next level. And and like original bands need to create that same thing. You know, they they have to create this where people can't deny like that. I love this band and I got to go see them whenever they play. And I've got to bring my friends and they just released an EP and I have to share it with this friend and that friend because it's just so good i mean that that's where like again I, i'm not dog i wish my original bands would have made it to super success levels like I, I i in fact i i've just got a chance to write uh original music and put out an album with some friends of mine just recently that was the first time i got back into original music it's called dope walker mm -hmm. uh and dude it's it was so great to fulfill that art side you know of of the just we're creating this for us and and so i dog dog on cover bands all you want that's fine i mean they're they're fulfilling their 
playing music dreams, you know, and, and if you're doing original music to do original music, then, then be proud of fulfilling your desires for creating something. And that the, sometimes for me, the process of, of being an original band is more important than the actual product. You know, it's the, the creation of the songs, the fine tuning, the recording, the mixing, that's like almost, that's the joy of original music for me almost, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, it comes back to like, while you're talking, I just think of like 10 other things I want to ask you. Cause you're, you're so good at this, like, uh, just answering the question thing. And that's another reason that listening to your podcast is, is one of my, you know, favorite local podcasts to listen to, you know, and I'm, uh, once again, we're not just rah, rah, rah us with the podcast, but what's it going to take to get people to go to live shows then, you know, whether it be pork tornadoes, whether it be three finger Betty or, or should people even be going to live shows? Should we be online shaming people for even attempting to play music right now because um i brought this up to you but there's that's happening a lot lately online is it really is that kind of your is that kind of your area right now or do you think that's statewide because i we we sort of went through a period of that where some bands were getting out there over the summer and some bands were being very no 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 we're gonna stay home and there was a little bit of that but i don't know i feel like much like the general population, you just have to, at this point, no one's telling us any rules. They're putting it all in our hands. So you just have to let people do what they're going to do, right? If you don't feel comfortable, you got to stay home. If, if you feel comfortable, you go out like until there's, until someone actually makes a like legitimate, you should not go out or you should like, I, I just kind of a firm believer in like, do it, do what you got to do. Right. Or is it a big deal up there for you guys? Up, up here, not so much. I mean, there's been hot button things in every area. It doesn't matter what town you go to. Somebody got thrown under the bus for something regardless. But it's it's still one of those things where on one of your podcasts, you were talking about how Twitter is kind of this place where bands die. You know, you don't don't post things on Twitter. Do it because somebody might see it, but it's not really yeah. like a place for bands. Um, you never know who will see it. It could prove to be promotional. But still, like, I follow so many people on Twitter that probably have no clue who I am, but I know that they're in the music scene and I get to see like a lot of their personal tweets and it's pretty, right. it's pretty wild. That's they think all... no one's looking at it, do they? No, you know, and it's one of those things that's pretty crazy to, to see people who are in the music scene, like say things like I see there's bands playing shows and I'm taking note of which ones there are. And I'm going to see to it that you never play another show anywhere near me again. And it's just like, wow. Like it Dude, and guess what? Good luck doing that. Like, you know, we we just had. I I'm, I live in Cedar Rapids, and like three weeks ago, uh, a real estate agent in town got like publicly busted for some bad social media content. Right, where the whole world just piled on her and said, "No, you're canceled." And then, like two weeks later, I I haven't even thought about it. And then I thought about today. I'm like, oh, she's she's fine. Everything blew over. We're on a 48 hour news cycle. So. As much as you do have to really be careful what you do and say, like, if you play that show and then, like, this one guy's like, you're never going to play music again, people are going to forget about it in a week. I mean, it's – there. you know where it's where it's probably maybe the worst in the state? I, I've only heard this, so maybe this is a myth. Maybe this is just rumors and stuff. But I've heard Iowa City is really bad where the the original music scene there has sort of – banded together to to say we're not playing music and no and and you're they're basically blackballing anyone that does go out and play music and they're trying to like trying to take that same stance of like well you're then you're screwed if you do this if you play the show nope you're no longer in our scene and it's like oh man this this shitty shitty world of 2020 we have enough problems trying to be in bands and musicians and now we got to worry about playing shows and not playing shows dude i've been, the whole time i've been sitting here with a with a shit-eating grin because uh there's venues i've seen doing it to one another like venues what? like i've seen venues where it's like we're closed but here's a giant flyer on the door and we're shitting all over this place that's a half a block away because they're open and we're not and they're they're giant assholes because they're open and it's like yeah, it comes back to who where are these rules nobody has rules nobody set up these rules and like that's like should it doesn't say nobody that if you're playing music in a bar, you should go to jail. That's not the rule. It's not even a regulation. Like they were like, bars are open. You can have half capacity. It's like, does that mean music? I don't know. It's like, well, the bar closes at 10. I, well, I guess music's over at nine 30 then, you know, like nobody's saying that you can't have a show. Some places are doing 
like double early shows. I've seen some shows going from like four till six thirty, and then like seven till nine thirty now instead of doing the typical like five to nine, nine to close because it's like we're still doing two shows. We're gonna squish them in earlier. Screw you, you know. And there's there are well, shows being played. I get it, but like I can't handle that when people are just just like I said earlier, throwing people under the bus yeah. for this stuff. And, and shame on you if, if you're like uh, a weekend warrior and you just play music for fun and you're the one like saying, oh, you, you shouldn't play music. Uh, how dare you say that to someone who does this for a living and like has to m- provide for their family and make these really tough choices. And then think about, <laughs> you know, I mean, we are so low tier compared to all these giant acts. But I mean, just just for us to get on the road and like put on one of our theater productions, I mean, we've got a crew of of like 10 people mm-hmm. that are like sound production, light production roadies. Uh, and that's just with, uh, within us. And then you've got the crew, the union crew that works at the venue. Then you've got the staff that takes tickets and cleans the place and the venue itself that's paying utilities and mortgage payments. Like for us to play a show actually puts money in a lot of people's pockets. And like, that's been the hardest part I think for me is, like us as a band, we'll be fine, but it's all these people that depend on bands playing to make their their income. Our our production guy, uh, RGS Productions out of Cedar Rapids, his name's Doug. He does he does all of our sound anywhere we go. I mean, the the man is a genius, and that's his full time job. He's got a family of uh, five or six kids, and he he bought like two hundred thousand dollars worth of lights and sound uh, last. October to get ready for summer of 2020 for all these gigs we had booked. Right. And, and and they didn't happen. So, so shame on you if you're, if you're only thinking about yourself in this, cause there, there's so many unknowns and there's so many people that depend on this. And if you give them an inch, they're going to go take it cause they have to. Right. Yeah. I mean, and I get some people are justifying that like, well, bars aren't a necessity. You know, you don't have to go to a bar. Well, yeah, that's true, I guess, you know. But if we're going to just start shutting stuff down, we're going to shut down every restaurant. We're going to start shutting down outlets. You don't need to – I mean, why don't we just start shutting down radio stations? Like, where are we going to stop shutting stuff down? It's like we're only going to have hospitals open and plumbers are going to work so the poop goes away from the house. You know, like those are the only two people who are going to have jobs yeah. anymore, you know. And, and garbage men. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. Yeah, I can't deal without garbage men. But well, I, and maybe maybe that goes back. Oh, sorry. Did you have something? No, no, no. Go. I said maybe that goes back to the devaluing of just live music in general. Is that there's such a hard push all over the state and the country of supporting your local restaurants and like doing your takeout and make keep these restaurants afloat. But it's like the bars and music venues. Like there's none of that. There's not that much talk about that. Well, keep your music venue alive and keep your bar alive that has live music. And it's just this weird like oh whatever it's the entertainment industry and that's where you know and don't get me wrong i love restaurants i've been keeping my local restaurants alive for a long time so i i buy into that but i've also tried to if man if you if any of your band friends are doing the live stream and they're asking for donations or now it's a ticket ticketed live streams i think is that we all need to go to this we we have one coming up on new year's there's been multiple ones happening around the state where the only way you can get in is if you pay mm-hmm. and i've I've been buying tickets to that and anytime a venue's got something going on, I'm trying to spend money on it because that's, I mean, it starts with us. I I said this in our podcast recently that the value of music starts within the music culture of us making sure that our friends that are non-band related know how cool said band is or know how important that music venue is because they trust us when it comes to music things, right? So yeah. You're the music guy. You tell me what bands I need to like, you know? Yeah. Imagine it this way. Imagine I'm a person who has nothing. I've never been to a live show. I don't know anything about local music. You're the only musician I know, Mike. And I'm like, dude, Mike, what do you know about music? And you're just like, dude, you know, it's, it's fun going out there playing, but the venue suck. Three Finger Betty's is shit band, you know, and like all this other stuff. And you're just going to sit there. Me, I'm just going to be like. Oh, the local music scene just sucks, doesn't it? Like everyone's a bunch of assholes and like so you are your own conduit to the local music scene. Why wouldn't you want to promote things and like I get it. I'm in a band that's kind of I want to say radical, but you know, we we're old school punk. We say a bunch of crazy stuff on on scene, uh, you know, like right there in front of your face and we're cool with it. We're loud and but that doesn't mean we don't play with a giant variety of bands. So like, I'm going to throw some bands out there just for shits and giggles. But like, I can't tell you how many people I've suggested TV cop to, you know, it's like they play, 
it was like ska punk back in the day and now it's like more of a pop punk type stuff and it's you know or like eugene levy or you know there's yeah, so many so it's just half like half loves have you heard of half loves they're absolutely incredible uh from iowa city i mean there are there are so many original bands in this state that i freaking love mm-hmm. yeah and, and it's up to us to spread that word in fact on our last episode we we made this bond me and casey klein the guy that was on the episode we said we challenged everyone listening to legitimately from the bottom of your heart find a find a band a local band around the state that you love and make a huge post about it on your personal fa- Facebook page and say you guys you may not have heard of this band but they're incredible and you should check them out here's how you can listen to them here's a cool YouTube video go check these guys out add them on their Facebook page if every musician in the state did something like that i mean that's going to go towards something to 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 providing this extra value that we're trying to get yeah, and I, I I know for a fact there's every local musician has another band that they're like, man, this band is this band is the best, you know. Really? Yeah. I mean, I mean, you're you played local music too. You know what it's like to be like, dude, my band's pretty cool. Like my band is pretty freaking cool. But then you like go somewhere and you're like, no, nah, no, nah, this band is pretty cool. And you Whoa. start you start to realize that like <laughs> the best. Yep. Yeah. For a while, I was telling everyone about my band. Now, I'm going to tell everyone about that band, you know? And it becomes that. And why don't we have more of that? It, and chances are, said band is going to return the favor to you and say, well, you got to check out this band. And then now you're just intertwining fan bases. And, like, that's really all that it takes is just showing support for each other. And, and like, okay, maybe somebody's playing music right now and you don't agree with that. Like okay just forget about it and just move on with your life like i i don't know what a shitty shitty time to be alive <laughs> <laughs> well it is kind of crazy though because like it seems like there's uh an accord i feel like this is like an accordion because everyone will go in these weird sp- spurts of like everyone's supporting each other and we're all doing good and then all of a sudden it's just like i only get six hundred dollars for a coronavirus check this time around what a load of crap you know and it's just like well what why we went from like kind of supporting each other to not and then i don't know i just i feel like everyone is being pulled apart and if you can just you know step through all that bullshit and support people locally i don't i don't care if i don't care what you're doing like three finger betty's facebook page one of the funnest things we do is just share things that other people are doing because why not this band just put out a music video watch it this artist has a cool thing check it out you know this person did the mixing and mastering look at their stuff you know like whatever it happens to be why not support everyone else but i mean what like i still think what is it really going to take other than just you and me trying to be like everybody support everybody everybody love everybody like is this going to change anything or is it is it something these people are going to have to think of on their own to make up their own mind to do it yeah pe- people got to think on it on their own man and this has been happening probably since since someone figured out what an instrument was and started putting groups of people together i'm sure this happened from nonstop where everybody just like hates each other and we get all worked up about stuff. I'm sure. I'm sure. And so ultimately what you have to decide is like, what is, what does music mean to you? Why are you doing this? If it's just for fun, then just have fun and like, just, just do what you want and don't care about what anybody else is doing. But like, if you, if you really want to take this seriously, whether you're a cover band, original band, any sort of genre, and you really want to do this, like it's all on you, dude. Like you are the only one that can actually, you can't take that woe is me stance. Like, well, we put out this amazing album, but no one listened to it. It's like, well, then it probably wasn't that good. Or maybe you just didn't work hard enough to get it into the hands of people that, that would have enjoyed it. And so you have to take one of the things that I always go back to is we, we, we love Halloween. We've always played a show on Halloween. It's my favorite holiday and the bars, just started getting lackluster every year. Like, Oh, there's some spider web in the corner and like, Oh cool. Half the people have a costume on. Like, you know, just the, the one year, the the year where it finally ended for us was there, there was supposed to be a costume contest at midnight. And then the bar was so busy that they just didn't even do it. They just forgot to do it. They weren't staffed for it. <laughs> so we took, we said, wouldn't it be cool if, if there was a giant, like adults only Halloween party that was like legit, and then I realized no one's going to do it. I We have to be the ones to do it or it's never going to get done. So we we decided we're going to put on this giant Halloween party. And up until this October, we didn't do it. But we did it five years in a row. 
We had like nearly 8,000 people come over those five years. Tickets sold. We donated 50 grand to local charities over those Ooh. five because of because of us just taking the initiative, knowing there was a hole somewhere and then filling it. And so like it's it was all on us. No one was going to start that party and then ask us to be the band. We had to just do it ourselves. So I don't know, man. I think as much as I want to say that we're saving – that we're the saving graces of our music scene by, by talking on the podcast. I, it's, it's not true. I mean, there, and here's the best part. There will be people listening that will take all this to heart and will like do everything that, that we said and, and it'll be all for the better, but you're st- it's still in your own hands, man. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. I, I feel like that too. You know, it's a, you, you got to do this stuff for yourself. Like, uh, like you said, if, if you made an album and you're like, well, nobody listened to it. Me. It's like, well, did you promote it at all? Did you, did you send it to any radio stations? Did you send it to anybody that like, everybody knows there's piles of people all over your Facebook. I like local live music. It's like, well, just send them your stuff. Here's a link. See if they click it. You never know. Like they're not going to, maybe you're not in their algorithm. That's why they don't see your posts, you know? So you've got to kind of bug people about it a little bit. And I mean, I even took to recently, you'll like this one. I set up a Reddit account for Three Finger Betty. And I was like, you know, once a week, I'm going to post in a different Reddit forum about something about Three Finger Betty, whether it be the, you know, vinyl record one or the the punks across America one or whatever, you know, whatever threads or, uh, you know, Reddit pages they have. And so like, one of the ones I did was I posted in Iowa about like, we had a new album come out. And then I made another post a month later that we had... Uh, a vinyl come out for that album and they booted me from from the page they they ban- they banned my thing and they were like well all you do is post about your band and i'm like yeah i mean i it took like a month in between me posting in this forum and they're like well i saw you post in other forums and it's like that's justified but still like i don't know why you're like what's the point of me having i don't know whatever i get it but some people don't want you to promote you know and they're like this doesn't pertain to iowa and it's like i'm a band in iowa like well how does this not pertain to iowa you know or and skip and skip over it if you don't like it. That, I mean, that, that is the beauty of it. Like, if you don't, if I don't like your band, then I'm just not gonna click on your link. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, I'm go right past it. I don't know. And that's something else. I feel like you know, Reddit is also kind of like Twitter, where it's like slightly supportive and slightly not. Where you get some people that are just like, you know, your music deserves to go viral after your band breaks up. And like that was a comment once, and it was like, whoa. <laughs> It's a little brutal there, buddy, but hey, you know. Like, oh, man. Yeah, Twitter Twitter doesn't seem like much of a use for a band, but I think I think you got to have the rest. Like, you know, Instagram I think is a is a big deal for bands out there that are looking for some sort of extra social content. Even dude like TikTok, I mean, as as weird and insane as that app is and how now someone in China has all my information, I don't know. I don't keep up with that, but <laughs> like I mean that was our fastest growing uh, at social media app that we've ever had as a band. It just whoop, just took off like 7,000 subscribers to our TikTok page in like three months, you know, like that's insane. So you, you can't be, you can't go, Oh, TikTok's stupid and not do it. Like, I don't know. Just make an account, see what happens. Right. Yeah. And I mean, that's the whole thing is like, I'm trying my best to avoid TikTok. But when I heard your story about that, I was like, Oh, I got to start a TikTok, don't I? <laughs> it's bad though, man. If you if you sit there and actually start scrolling through like they call it the for you page, like all of a sudden 4 hours later you'll you'll go what just happened? I is it really 4 hours later? <laughs> so <laughs> you got to be careful. Like I don't, I try not to even use the app unless I'm posting anything. <laughs> yeah, I feel that way about a lot of social media. I try my best to to stay off of it or like you just do like one or two scrolls and then just like all right, close it. That's done. It's over with. I don't need to see any more of this. I think we're just beyond the stages of, of the old time unity, you know, cause when we all used to just meet together at shows and play shows together. Now it's all we meet online and just talk shit. So you just got to like figure out your own. You just got to figure out your own path and just put your head down and go to it. And, and again, that goes back to what do you want out of this? Like if, you, if it's just playing music with your friends, hell yes, go for it. If it's trying to sell out Wells Fargo Arena in two years then like get to work like this is all on you nobody's gonna offer you that gig yeah 
I mean, and like you said, some of it comes down to community. Some of it comes down to supporting one another. Uh, You guys are one of the best bands for that. I mean, you would be like, well, we're recording this video, and uh, I'm not trying to just, like, you'd be like, hey, but somebody's walking around with a fistful of liquor in the video, and it's just like, well, actually, this video, the liquor was, you know, supplied to us by this this company, you know, and it's, whether it be, you know, the alcohol company or a liquor store or whatever it is, you know, so you're actually, like, mixing your band a little bit and cross promoting other stuff with your band and and kind of intertwining it and i i feel like that is important to do and i get it that not every band has the following that the pork tornadoes go you know have and maybe three finger betty's not going to get a bush light sponsorship or whatever it happens to be but you know we put out an album and we took it to like local record stores and they're going to sell it there so we're like one by one we're hitting all the record stores and kind of partnering up with them and making posts about them you know so Dude, it, start start local, man. There there's never been a need like there is now for local businesses to all be supporting each other, you know. So like, if you are a band that has a decent a decent following, like you know, a thousand Facebook fans or something like that, and you're in said town and you really love said bar or said restaurant or like all these mi- microbreweries around, like we're get together with them, and be like, let's let's brew a beer, like you don't have to pay me anything, but like I will help push people to your brewery and let's like, let's put our name on a beer or something. I mean the, the sky, the, there's a, a tribute band, Foo, Foo Fighters tribute band in Sierra. It was called Fresh Fighters mm-hmm. and they're, they're incredible. And they partnered with a local microbrewery here in town and, and they do this like beer that's there, <laughs> you know, like that would never happen five years ago. Now we're all trying to help each other out in one way or another and support each other. So if you have, don't doubt, if you have a fan base of people that like what you do, use that to, to, to help get other things. Like, cause if you have that fan base, you could, you can sell yourself to places, you know? Yeah. I mean, I made a post about it on audible farm and uh, on my personal page, but like Couchtown coffee helps me out. You know, I, I help them out and er- thing. everybody's happy. We high five each other at the end of the day and smile a bunch and I've got coffee and they've got promotion. And <laughs> I don't know it if you, just, saw, did you see that sack of coffee I got? I did. That's amazing. That's going to last a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe a month or so. No. <laughs> I, I ordered my Couchtown coffee, uh, probably right after we did. So yeah, you said six months ago. Insane. I, I ordered mine and dude, it was the delicious yeah it's really good uh, thank you for supporting couch town i'm sure andrew loves it you know he's a uh, he's a good guy and that's the other thing i think is crazy like musicians get this bad you know rap it's like i mean first and foremost uh pork tornadoes i figured out who you guys were online i started a podcast i, I did the whole thing and then i was like well i'll do an interview with somebody who's gonna hit me up it's mike is mike famous is he like weird is he gonna be like <laughs> you know, an ass or like, what's it, what's he like? Is he just going to be a jerk to me the whole time? No, you're a regular person. You're a nice guy. Everyone in your band, I'm assuming is just, it's just as caliber of niceness as you, you know, you're all just regular people. Um, totally. some musicians, maybe, yeah, a little rough around the edges, but we're all regular people. And that's something else I feel like I have so many musicians. It's just like, yeah, they're just dirty people. Look at this one musician, one bad apple, the whole bunch gets labeled that way. And it's like, I get it to an extent, but like, we're not all bad people. As a matter of fact, I, I applied for a job once and somebody knew somebody that was a musician and they didn't like him and they said they almost passed me up on the job because of that. So that's not good, man. No, and it's just because like, oh, I know th- I knew this guy was a musician and I don't like him, so I saw you were friends with him and I was just like, I don't even want to have this guy in for an interview, but I brought you in anyways and it was just like, that was the start of the interview and I was just like, jeez. Uphill battle now. Yeah, I mean, it worked out okay, but it was still one of those deals where it was like, man, I can't believe that. So yeah, musicians do get a negative connotation, but like, we're all great people and it's not... I, some people are like, well, no, you know, nobody's going to want to sponsor with my band or team up. But there's been there's been a brewery around here that helped a band make a beer, too. And it flew off the shelves instantaneously. I mean, well, think of think of something unique. Yeah, there, there's that famous story about uh, uh, it's Dr. Dre. It was like it's just such an unbelievable story where Dr. Dre was so huge. And he told his agent, he's like, I want to, I want shoes. I want to make shoes like, like everybody had shoes. Athletes had, you know, Air Jordans. Everybody has shoes. Like, I want to make a shoe. And he goes, why? He goes, everybody has a shoe. He goes, what do you know about shoes? Like who, why would someone that likes you buy shoes? Then what, what do you, your fans know you? And he's like, well, I'm, you know, I'm Dre. I do beats. And he's, they're like, let's make headphones. No one's made headphones. So they made beats, beats by Dre, which became a billion dollar entity. So like, don't just, 
if a if a band got a beer that you know like don't go get a beer from the same thing like think of something else like what's something else that you can that makes sense for your brand that you can partner with you know i I don't know they they, again it's forging your own path right yeah and i'm i almost don't even want to say it because i like couchtown coffee so much and everyone should just support them but there are a lot of coffee roasters out there nowadays too and uh hit them up you never know i've actually had a few hit me up after i got couchtown on the line (laughs) um but it was funny because i you know i spent a lot of time hitting up a lot of different local coffee roasters probably like 30 or 40 and and couchtown was the first and only one to hit me back for a long time so i forged i forged a relationship with them and then you know three or four months down the later this other company's just like hey and it's like well maybe a little too little too late here but but it's still one of those deals. I almost don't want to do bad by them. I'd love to have a different coffee sponsor every time and have everyone just hooking me up with coffee. But still, like, <laughs> uh, so if you want to send me free stuff, my address, yeah, no. Give me that free stuff. <laughs> but, you know, you guys have done a great job uh, teaming up with local businesses. Something else I wanted to spin off of you because we're getting close to an hour. But I wanted to spin this idea off you, like outsourcing some of the things that your band you know, could be doing on their own, but wants to just let someone else do, for example, your production. So like you guys could drag all your own lights everywhere, set them up, run all your own MIDI cables, do the whole thing, blah, blah, this, that, and the other. I mean, the obvious one that people do a lot is sound guy. Cause yeah. it's like, it's hard to be your own sound guy, but like, it's hard to be your own light guy. It's hard to be yeah. your own production, anything. How does a band take the leap into having their own sound guy or their own light guy? Or like you said, you have a production guy that has a wall of LEDs behind you, which is absolutely insanely crazy, by the way. <laughs> and, super cool. <laughs> yeah. And how do you how do you work up to that? Or how do you take the first leap? Or was it something where you're just like, we'll hire a sound guy, we'll pick up the money on the back end. You know, it'll cost us a little bit at first, but eventually people will hear the difference and pay us. With with our guy, Doug, and this has been a long lasting relationship. Doug, Doug had a very small sound company back in the day, and I knew him from some old pre- he was he used to own a recording studio that he sort of got out of into live live sound. And we for we knew we needed a sound guy for a show that where we couldn't we couldn't handle it in the bars anymore. Like it's just such a hey, you can do it yourself. You can save a hundred dollars and lug all this gear around and then just worry about what it sounds like and or you can just pay a little bit of money and lose that stress. Make sure that it always sounds good because you got a guy. So we knew we needed someone and we knew we just didn't have enough money to pay. And we said, Doug, you got to come work for us. Let's let's start here and you're our guy. Let's let's run through this together. And he believed in us. He, he said, oh, I think I can really sell you to some local festivals. I think we can eventually build this up. So he did a lot of pro bono stuff for us, real cheap, basic lighting. And then as we grew, we had that relationship that we all worked together. He cut us a deal. We cut him a deal. And then now we're we're working together to these high paying gigs where we can legitimately pay for them. But a lot of times it's taking the risk. It's investing in yourself, knowing for a fact that this is going to be a huge show and banking on yourself and saying we got to go all out on production. Right. So let's do it. And sometimes sometimes maybe you lose some money right off the bat. But it's in order for people to see how great you are and then to continue to build that fan base, right? So you might you might take a little bath buying all that stuff or hiring somebody, but like for promo video materials, I mean, Jesus, if you don't have a, a good audio and light show for like your promo videos, then like what's the point? You're, you're not going to grow, right? So – it's it's in you have to take those investments way early on and know that you're not going to make some cash right off the bat and then just believe in your product, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing. It's not going to happen right away every time either. Nope. That's something I mean, you're you're just a little bit older than me, but like my generation I feel like was so close to the cutoff of people that like would be like, oh, I, I tried playing guitar and I didn't, you know, I wasn't good at it. And it's like, well, how long did you try? And it's like, well, like 12 minutes. And then I, I just realized <laughs> I wasn't ever going to shred. So I gave up. And, but these are the same people that will spend 60 hours a week while having a full time job playing video games. And they're like super good at Call of Duty, but they, <laughs> they'll put the time into that, but they won't put the time into anything else. So. Dude, it, and we've been a band. We've been a band for twelve years now, and people don't realize that. And even even in Cedar Rapids, where we kind of had a meteoric rise, we used to play shows to zero people. Free show, couldn't even get my friends to come to a free show. You know, like I, there there were multiple times not one person was in the bar during an entire set. You know, so 
like we just kept going and kept believing in ourselves. Eventually somebody's going to see us and we keep doing what we're doing. So yeah, dude, you are not going to get anywhere overnight or even in the course of a year or two. I mean, this is a, this is a long haul game. Music is. Yes. Uh, one of my favorite things somebody told me very early in my podcasting, I don't remember if it was on or off camera, but they said music is one of those things where like, it's attrition. Who can keep doing this and not get bored? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what it is. You know, like, uh, could you keep playing music for four or five years? You know, some people take a break. I took a break. You took a little break, but you came yep. back stronger than ever and, and kept rocking and even found time to, like you talked about earlier, do the dope, dope walker thing and make, yeah. make your own original music again. So that was my first foray into original music since 2006. And it was, it was great, man. It was so awesome to fulfill both cups of like, of why I do this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One for all the admiration and recognition and podcast appearances and one for the, this is mine. I created it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look at what we got here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I only got one other thing written down that we haven't talked about. Merch. What about merch? How do you feel about bands with merch? Should you have merch? Should you not have merch? What's your Dude, thoughts? I, merch is so important. And <laughs> and here's the big deal. Number one, is it not only is it important, but number two spend the money and get the good stuff. Like, cause I, I'm going to tell you straight up. I may think you're the best band in the world. Uh, and I, this has happened before. I think I went to one of my favorite bands is Deftones and I went and saw Deftones and they had like hundred percent cotton shirts. And I was like, Nope. I, cause I just, I hate hundred percent cotton shirts that like are going to suck after one wash. And I didn't buy it, but like you can spend just a little bit of extra money on a t-shirt to get like, the Gildan soft styles or the, uh, Bella and canvas, like just a little bit extra dollars and people will legitimately, in fact, I may hate your band, but if you have a cool shirt on like a Bella and canvas, I'll buy it. You, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? You're a hundred percent right on that. There's so many people that I've like hooked up with an audible farm shirt where they're like, Oh dude, this shirt's nice. And it's like, yeah. you don't even have to like what's on it. You're just like, this shirt's cool. Like, and you're right. I cotton shirts, they're okay. I'll wear them, but it's 2020. You know, we don't need to make stuff out of razor blade material. You know? no. Dude. And think about with some of the easiest shirts are important, obviously, but like koozies, koozies are a gold mine. If, if you don't have koozies as a band, like you can get 500 koozies for $500. Yeah, and the going value on a koozie is probably five bucks. Yeah. You just made two grand in profit if you sold all five hundred of those. Two thousand yeah. dollars of profit over the course of maybe a year for yeah. for selling stupid koozies that no one's gonna. I have I have a drawer full of a thousand koozies that I never use because I just buy them all the time and then never use them. So that's I think that's a huge. And the, we've been doing the slapback koozies like they're you know like slap bracelets. Yep. They make koozies that way now because it goes around uh, bikes, like the biking culture, you know, the okay. riding, riding bicycles. Yeah. They, they wrap them around their uh, handlebars, and then that way when they get off, they've got a koozie. It unsnaps, and they put it around a beer. That's, you'll spend about two bucks a koozie on that, but people seem to really love those. Yeah. <laughs> They're slap koozies or something, slap koozies maybe. Hey, you were saying biker, and it made me think uh, Super Troopers. Oh, biker. Biker. I don't, yeah, I don't know if you remember that, where they're meeting up. Anyways, um, but yeah, I feel 100% with the merch thing. The craziest thing about merch was one, I played a handful of shows with the uh, metal band Unity, uh, still kind of on hiatus or whatever, but uh, I played some shows with them, and I remember once going to Illinois and playing a show with them, and I had no less than five people that were like, dude, your band's awesome. Do you have a CD? Nope. Do you have T-shirts? Nope. Nope. It's, you know, like I was, I don't want to say I was just hired as a hired gun, but I wasn't heading up the band. I wasn't in charge of any important decisions. I could be like, Hey, we should get merch. And then it's just like, that's it, you know? Or so I, I left a lot of those decisions up to other people, but it sucks when you go somewhere and it's like, I mean, we got some videos on YouTube. Um, it, dude, it's a walking billboard too. And, and think about you when you start going, Oh man, if we buy these shirts, they're going to cost a lot of money up front. But I mean, you should have at least every band member has probably what four to five fa friends or family members that'll probably buy it. Like you've got, 
you'll sell 20 of them right off the bat. And then like, Oh shit. Okay, cool. We're, I, I just think it's so important. To, maybe now is not the greatest time to be buying merch because if you're not playing shows, we're stuck with a giant merch case full of shirts right now that are not selling. But, uh, you know, when things get back to normal, like, and think of how many, here's another person to partner with. Think of how many great, uh, local screen printing outfits are out there right now. We've got a great one <laughs> in Cedar Rapids, AJ, the other one that does the Iowa music podcast with us called Wolf Den Wears. Mm -hmm. And that dude will hook you up with a great shirt at a great price to help design it for you. Um, so partner, partner with all those local companies, just like we've been talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, and some of those people could be even in the music scene. Like I found a guy who plays in the music scene and he, he has his own screen printing company. It was like, you're, you're my guy, you know, <laughs> why not? You know, and it works. It's great. You forge these relationships and everything works out really well for everybody. Um, do Mike, we've, we've gone over an hour here. I mean, I could sit and talk to you for hours, man. You're uh, you're a great guy to sit on and talk to, but we'll do something in person sometime, man, where we can, we can grab a beer and do a mobile podcast. Yes, sir. Before we go, let's, uh, cover that new year's Eve ticketed live event. Uh, we had, we had discussed it very briefly. So let's go over that. Uh, how do people find out about the pork tornadoes live event this new year's Eve? Yeah, easiest way to do it is just go to porktornadostickets.com and that'll link you to a to a link tree that has a bunch of stuff on there. The first one is our New Year's Eve live stream. And dude, again, we're just trying to put value back into music. We've given enough free live streams to people. It is time for people to pay for music. And we did a giant, giant full I'll, I'll give you we pre-recorded it. Okay. That's that's the thing you want to know. That's the inside scoop. It's all pre-recorded, but we spent a lot of money on it. And it is going to live, in quotation, stream on New Year's Eve starting at 10 o'clock central. You buy a ticket and you get instant access. And it's 90-minute 90, 90 show from us with a countdown to midnight with seven other acts from around the state of Iowa. Uh, six different special guests, including uh, Carson King, Tim Dwight. We got some special guests on there. There's games. There's interviews. It's just going to be like probably the, cool, the coolest thing we've ever done, the most ambitious thing we've ever done. And again, we're uh, we're bank we're potentially going to take a bath in a, with spending a lot of money because we wanted to to take that risk and and hopefully people will see the 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 value of it. So you know, like if you're looking for something to do on New Year's Eve and you want to finally check out the pork tornadoes and at least make your girlfriend happy or something because she likes Taylor Swift, it would it'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> and I promise. You, it, you may not you may not like us, but you'll appreciate the production value of this. I can guarantee that. Yeah. Hashtag your girlfriend's favorite band. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, this could be the start of uh, the Pork Tornadoes holiday Christmas special type deal. You know, like you remember those old shows where it was like Bing Crosby and everyone's out there crooning and stuff and they had little skits. That was sort of we like the Dick Clark's Rock and New Year's Eve. That's sort of what we kind of base this off of, like just the variety show. There's a lot of different. It's just going to go one act. OK, cool. Here's an interview. Here's another band. Here's an interview. Here's a fun game. Here's another band. It's just going to be this cool little thing. So, I, I mean, I'm really excited about it. I've been nonstop editing video for about two weeks, and I think we're finally about there. <laughs> oh, man, it's it's going to be tons of fun. I, I actually really want to watch that now. You got me really, really interested with this little, like, literally, like, three-minute promo on it. So I'm, <laughs> I'm really stoked to check this out. Uh, PorkTornadoTickets.com? Yeah, PorkTornadoTickets.com. PorkTornadoTickets.com. Yeah, or it's all over Facebook. We're trying to pepper the shit out of our five people that see our posts. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, it's right there. I just went to your Facebook yeah. page uh, at pork at the pork tornadoes on Facebook. For you see that you see that photo I just put up the explosion in the background. Yeah, buddy, <laughs> that's awesome, dude. It's gonna be so cool. So uh, if if you're hating on the pork tornadoes, why are you hating? Uh, if if you haven't heard of them, go check out this New Year's Eve show. It's gonna be freaking crazy i i can't wait to see you guys live i did get an invite to see you once this summer at adventureland yeah i didn't make it i'm sorry well we'll do it we'll do it some other time and we sh we're supposed to be at woolies actually it was supposed to happen in november we decided to postpone that uh february 13th at woolies in des moines so um that might be a fun one to meet up at. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, live shows are still happening. Might be getting postponed, yes. but they're still happening. 
So well, and you got to you just got to weigh the risks for your own band. Like we don't want to put that we don't want to put that many people in a room if if the mandates say don't do it. So we postponed in November. We'll see what February looks like. Absolutely, man. It sounds good, Mike. Uh, don't go away, but uh, thank you for joining me on the podcast, man. It's always great to talk to you. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. Oh, baby. Uh, I didn't mention it in the intro, but you guys got to check out that New Year's Eve ticketed live stream. Uh, The link was at porktornadotickets.com, I believe. Um, If not, I have a link to it down below. If I misspoke, don't listen to what I said. Scroll down below, find the links. And uh, there's links to the Pork Tornado's information as well as Dope Walker's stuff down below. Uh, if I can find a link, I think I have a link for some Iowa Music Podcast stuff maybe as well. So I'll throw that down there. Otherwise, search out that Iowa Music Podcast. It's tons of fun. Uh, I don't want to be like, Buh, but I, I may have gotten a sneak peek of a tiny snippet of... Uh, the New Year's Eve ticketed live stream and it looks amazing so you guys have to check that out Um, it's going to be tons of fun that's all I have to say Uh, check out the Pork Tornadoes online I'm sure there's people that are just like 5 million views really and it's like yeah go check it out there's a video online that's nearing 5 million views Uh, uh, that's insanity considering uh, the most viewed video I've ever put up online is probably you know only in the 20,000 range maybe. So hats off to the Pork Tornadoes putting in the work, doing the stuff. Uh, If you guys want more insight like this, more podcasts like this, more hard hitting things like this, uh, hit up the Iowa Music Podcast. We talked about it a little bit in the podcast here, but it's uh, it's not as frequent as this one, but it, it, they tackle a lot of wild topics in episodes. So check it out. I haven't listened to the entire catalog yet, uh, it was one of those deals where I listened to like 12 episodes or 10 episodes in a row, and then I was just like, I gotta save some of these. So I, I started saving some of them because before, you know, you're gonna burn through all the podcasts. But hey, we've got 120 down here, and uh, I've only duplicated a few people, and I feel great about this podcast. Um, it's been a wild ride this year, and we've got, I think, one more episode. But uh, anywho, it's Christmas coming up, so everybody. Uh, Take care and uh, have a Merry Christmas. And I really appreciate you guys listening to the podcast. If you want any of those Audible Farm shirts that we mentioned earlier in the podcast, just go to shop.audiblefarm.com. There are links um, all everywhere. Go to audiblefarm.com and you can find all the links to anything you need Audible Farm, uh, the YouTube channel. Let people know if you like the podcast. Word of mouth works really good. Works really good for bands too. You know, if you uh, know somebody that's got a band, say, hey, uh, I know this cool band, you know, Mike Mike said it in his podcast. It sounds like a, a very great concept. So if you're listening to this episode and you know somebody that's in a band, uh, I don't care who it is, just say, hey, this band's really cool. I like them. You know, let everyone know why you like them or who's in the band and things that are going on or what they've done recently. And, uh, you know, hats off. If everybody's, everybody's working this year to try to do something that is really, really tough and that is play music uh, during a pandemic. So... Um, whatever avenue you can find uh, will work out great. Like I mentioned previously on the uh, on another podcast, I mentioned it in an outro. There was a, a podcast that Mike Schulte did on the Iowa Music Podcast where they talked about social media and the importance of that. And uh, he deep dived into that. So if you were interested or intrigued by that social media talk that we had in here, um, go back to his episodes. Uh, and, you know, like I said, a lot of these topics are topics that um, you know, he might talk about a tiny bit on his on his podcast, and uh, you never know if you if you liked little snippets of what was going on here. Check out his podcast, and uh, once again, check out the Pork Tornadoes New Year's Eve live stream. It's a ticketed event, but uh, it's going to be worth it. Like I said, uh, there's links down below to everything. Thank you guys for listening. I appreciate it. Um, we'll see you next week. Peace.